This is my second time performing here at Flappers. And um, last time I performed, my family saw you know, my, my first stand-up routine. And they had all this like useless feedback. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, why don't you try writing some new material? <laughs> so look, I'm going to share something personal with you guys, OK? Um, me and my boyfriend, we had a threesome with two of my friends. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't invited, but <laughs> I heard it was amazing. Just like had to be there. Maybe next time. So I'm a model. <laughs> but I think the most I've ever been excited about a photo is the time that I met Stevie Wonder. And um, yeah, I asked if you'd take a picture with me. And he said no. Yeah, it was really disappointing. And I think the worst part about it was I looked visibly upset in my photo with Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> so my friend accidentally hit me in the back of the head with a basketball, and everyone started freaking out. And I was like, oh my god, don't worry. I don't, I don't use this thing. <laughs> okay. If you can't tell, I love Miami. <laughs> Um, so I was swimming in the ocean. It was a beautiful day. I mean, the water was warm, and I saw the most delightful jellyfish. <laughs> you guys, it was so cute. <laughs> and I was like, I just knew, like, I had to pet it. <laughs> and so I started swimming towards it. And then I had this thought, and I was like, oh my god, I'm not an expert, but I've seen SpongeBob. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to pet the jellyfish. <laughs> And so I stopped, you know, and I was like backstroking. <laughs> and it just kept coming towards me. And it was coming towards me. And as it hit me, I realized that it wasn't a jellyfish. It was a used condom. <laughs> <laughs> so I did what I always do, and um, I poked a hole in it. <laughs> I can really see myself being like a step parent, you know? <laughs> you see it? But I want to be like a cool stepmom. I want to be like the kind of stepmom that you buy your drugs from. <laughs> I believe that uh, family discounts are for blood relatives only. Um, so I don't have any kids, but I do have a dog, and his name is Milo. And he is so smart, OK? I could see us as one of those uh, you know, dog, dog performing duos. Like, he would hold up the hula hoop, and then I would jump through it. <laughs> No, he's smart though, you guys. He's an ESA, which is an emotional support animal. So basically, he's like, he flies for free, and he's like a reusable Kleenex. <laughs> and so I was going through this like especially rough patch in my life, and I was leaning on him a lot. And um, I think we all have our limits. <laughs> and he reached his. <laughs> so I turned to him to console me one day, and he just looked at me. He looked me dead in the eye, and he removed his red service dog vest, <laughs> walked out to the balcony, unlatched the fire escape. I watched him shimmy down the ladder one paw at a time. Must have caught the bus to LAX, because three months later, I got a paw-written letter from Tucson, Arizona, <laughs> saying that he would come back if I was willing to change my ways. <laughs> OK, so I did the only thing I knew how to do. He was obviously emotionally distressed. <laughs> so I got him a service dog. <laughs> yeah, my service dog has a service dog. Two dogs. <laughs> and no one tells you this. Like, two dogs, two dogs equals one baby. It's literally the exact same thing. So um, my friend Matt, he just got out of this three-year relationship with this girl that is um, too good for him. <laughs> and now he's living the single life. And single guys are always saying things like, I need to focus on myself. I need to do me. Oh my god, I get it. You need to do you. Do you and everyone else. Like my mama always said, why spoon when you can fork? <laughs> So he calls me and he goes, CJ, you know, I could really use your help.
help decorating. I should have just done my bachelor pad, and I could really use a feminine touch. Or decorating. A feminine touch. Dude, you're a bachelor now. This is a bachelor pad. Through your apartment, we need to convey that you are only available for a one night stand. <laughs> for example, get rid of your headboard. Nothing says you're not gonna stick around like you don't have a headboard. <laughs> In fact, just get rid of the bed. You need something less supportive, like, like a futon. <laughs> and I don't wanna see pillows on the futon because think about it, if you can't support her head, you can't support her dreams. <laughs> When I go in your refrigerator, I want to see like three packets of ketchup, some expired Panda Express, and like one Pops Blue Ribbon. You know why? Because we don't support her digestive system. <laughs> no, and get rid of the trash. Like, go to the Hustler store, get a disposable plastic bag, hang it on your front doorknob. That's your trash now. <laughs> and let's be honest, because now that you're single, you're going to want people on Facebook to know that you're single. So we need to update your profile picture to a shirtless bathroom mirror selfie. <laughs> I don't want to see like any any handrails in the bathroom. All your shower towels are on the ground. <laughs> no shower curtain. The only supportive thing you can have in your bathroom is like a single bar of Dove soap, just like supporting some pubes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you guys. Uh, one last thing before I go. I know that there's a lot of managers, you know, talent agents casting directors here at these showcases. Um, I'm kind of in between representation right now. <laughs> so if you wanna, like, if you have any booking inquiries, any booking inquiries, uh, you can forward them to my old roommate, Ruth. That's ruth at radioshack.com. <laughs> Thanks guys, I'm CJ Franco. Yeah.